Hello one and all and welcome to the Math Magic Show. In this one we are going to take a look at simplifying this expression ln of e to the x and we'll understand why that equals x exactly. So this is a bit of a perhaps non-traditional video on math. It's for those who really like to explore mathematics beyond what they just have learned in school. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to begin with a graph. That might be the best place to begin when you deal with these things. So I'm going to graph as follows. This is my usual coordinate system, x along the horizontal, y is called the vertical axis of course, and let's make a picture. That red graph that you see right here, that's e to the x. So this red graph represents e to the x that function. In math, a particular value that you're plugging in, for example, is often given a subscript. So in this case what I mean is this, take a look. It says x sub 0 on the bottom here. That's a particular value of x. We can indicate plugging that value in by drawing like a little arrow. So the arrow will kind of hit the curve and then bounce off the curve and then hit over the y-axis on that side right here. So this is y equals e to the x sub 0. So e to the x sub 0 is a very important remember that basically represents a number. So for example, like if x sub 0 is 1, then it's e to the first. It's just a number. It's a disguised form of a number though. And sometimes people have trouble getting over that because we kind of get accustomed to writing 2 or 4 or 8 using specific symbols but e to the x sub 0 it's just a disguised form of a number. That so this demonstrates e to the x you grab a value, plug it in, you get an output, works like magic. This is how conventionally we are taught to read graphs from the horizontal over to the vertical using those arrows there. But is there some other way of reading the same graph? Yes there is. So the key then is this, take a look. On the bottom here I have it so that it says input which means, to be more clear, that the y-axis could also be called the output axis in this context. Is there anything special though about reading the graphs this way? Of course not. So what I'm going to do is take the next leap, so to speak. Take a look. I'm going to simply switch this. So the input becomes the vertical axis, and the output becomes the horizontal axis. And let's stop here for a second. This is already different from the way we conventionally read graphs. But you should remember there's nothing special about reading graphs in a conventional way. That's just something somebody made up at some point. And if you think about this very carefully, if you look at this graph, this is no longer e to the x. Because we're looking at it from the vertical back down to the horizontal. In other words, we're looking at it from this way. This way and then coming back down this way to x sub 0. So from the vertical down to the horizontal. That is essentially the graph of a new function. The inverse of e to the x, the one that reverses whatever e to the x does. That inverse is called the ln function, the natural log function. <laughs> so when you deal with the functions and their inverses, you have to be careful because if you think about it carefully enough, you just need one graph. And if you know how to read it the two separate ways, horizontal to vertical or vertical back to horizontal, that's all you need essentially. Let's take a look at the next stage here. So I'm going to rename this graph as ln of y. And I'm doing that because I want to emphasize a key point. That now y's would be my input and the x's would be the outputs. Let's take a look at the next move. So that's as if they're basically I were plugging values in from the vertical and then putting them out on the horizontal. And notice something. That now, using ln y, if y for example is equal to e to the x sub 0, which is like the original input, then this will take us back to x sub 0 itself. Do you see that? So in other words x sub 0 is equal to ln of e to the x sub 0. I hope you really got the essential idea just now. I simply took that e to the x and I'm reading the graph in the opposite direction which means that the ln of y, in other words it becomes ln of e to the x sub 0 but that's just taking you back to your starting value of x sub 0. So what is this telling us? It's telling us that ln and the e function essentially are inverses. Whatever e first does the ln function reverses it literally cancels it. So if you begin with your input x sub 0, you output e to the x sub 0, and then you stick that back into the ln function, it's going to output back x sub 0, just the way you see that. This is all you really need to understand the e to the x and its inverse ln functions. But this is how it's not conventionally presented. That's another key aspect here. So what I mean is, the next stage is basically to try to make this graph look conventional so that you can read it from the horizontal back to the vertical. So let's take a look. Uh, to me that's kind of actually more complicated than this stage. So if this is the graph, I'm going to do a kind of rotation. Take a look. So you rotate it this way first and then you spin it. Look. <laughs> and it looks like this. Now this looks like a conventional picture of the ln function. 
The only issue is the labels are not quite correct. So we can fix the labels. So what I mean by that is this. Take a look. I'm going to call this part e to the x sub 0. I'm going to relabel things. So now this is going to become basically x sub 0. That's a particular value of x. From this perspective, where things are labeled in a conventional fashion. Which means that that graph now becomes ln of y. That's how you would label that graph in its conventional way. And then lastly, that means that over here, this would be ln of x sub 0 because that is how conventionally the values are labeled. And I want to stress an important point here that x sub 0 is now like a particular value. ln of x is kind of like the whole curve. ln of x sub 0 is a particular output. So if you know a function, you basically also know its inverse as long as instead of reading from the horizontal to the vertical, you read from the vertical back down to the horizontal. Often that works in most cases. And this other stage that I just showed you, let me stress that, that's just so we can make things look conventional in terms of how we have decided, you know, as a kind of species, I guess, or humanity to read our graph. That's about it. Okay, that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in another mathematical adventure. <laughs>